Hey everyone, Tyson the Subaru Specialist from Subaru Prince George here. On this snowy day, we're taking a look at the 2023 Subaru Crosstrek Convenience. This is the most entry-level Crosstrek that you can buy, apart from not having the manual transmission. This is the Convenience with EyeSight. So, crystal white exterior. That black cladding really shows up. It's powered by a two liter four cylinder boxer engine producing 152 horsepower. They're fairly zippy. I know lots of people complain about a lack of power. I owned one. I can't say I experienced any issues with the amount of power. On a day like today, the 8.7 inches of minimum ground clearance is really attractive. As you can see, looking at the other vehicles here, we got a decent amount of snow in the last 24 hours. Lots of people have been getting stuck on our lot while they're coming through, not in their Subarus. Our taxi service has uh, unfortunately been getting stuck, We're just waiting for the plows. But today is a great day for Subaru weather. In the back of a Crosstrek, there's way more room than people expect. It's very tall, it's very wide, it's very deep. You have nice hard physical tie-downs at the rear to secure anything awkward. You have the tethers for child seats on the back of the seats in addition to the latch system, the lower anchors and tethers in front or in the front of the second row seats. I'll show you those. We've got a halogen cargo light that will shut off when I close the rear hatch. And then we have these two hooks up top. Those are grocery bag hooks. So you hook the loop of your grocery bag over it and then it stops them from tumbling around when you take corners. You've got two on the bottom as well. And you can utilize all four with the cargo net system that you can order as an accessory from Subaru. It's a nice kind of hammock style one. It sandwiches the stuff you're carrying. It's great. Underneath the false floor, you've got your temporary spare tire, your eye bolt for securing, for uh, recovering anything else or other vehicles or yourself if you ever get stuck. And you would screw that eye bolt in behind this door. And there is one on the front passenger side. So you got rear driver and front passenger third seat belt comes out of the back goes through there and then clicks in two places up front that's so everyone ends up with a three-point harness Subaru's all about safety so that's where that comes in when the seats fold it's virtually flat there is a bit of a bump here can't get away from that but I have lots of clients that camp in their cross tracks and they've said that a foamy or an air mattress takes up that bump very very easily backup camera should you ever need to clean it right here and then the switch to open it pretty much between those two stars little rubber switch click it unlocks and then you lift they all come with the privacy glass behind the driver window so it's not limo tint by any means but it is fairly dark second row good headroom good leg room up to three passers can fit comfortably across now, if you can see the red, that means the seat's not locked. Push down, it's locked. I was mentioning the lower anchors and tethers. These pieces come off. That is what you attach the anchor to. So, very easy. Uh, I actually got asked the other day if you could put a child seat in the middle. You've got the anchors on either side, so I guess it would depend on the car seat that you have. On the doors, or in the doors, you've got bottle holders with storage, power windows, which window locks on right now so you can't use those faux carbon fiber trim should you need it child lock and then the tires and wheels you get so these the wheels themselves the rims those are the same rims you get on the touring model and the sport uh, same as the outdoor but the outdoors these are just gun metallic gray uh, they're 17 inch and the tire size is 225 60 r17s they're yokohama geo landers i know it's kind of hard to tell the covered but it does say geo lander they are m plus s rated so they're all seasons but you are legally allowed to drive on most highways here in british columbia with these tires there are a couple exceptions where you need the three peak mountain snowflake but they are legal up front power windows locks and mirrors as you can see that window lock was depressed more carbon fiber faux trim your power mirror adjustment and then bottle holder with storage and then one of our packing slips got the last six of the van yeah it's very cool actually it's got the whole van on it 
height adjustable driver's seat just on a pump system. So you can pump it down if you need more room or you can pump it up. As you pump it up, it also slides it slightly forward. And same thing, when you pump down, it moves you slightly back. Fuel door release down here. It is on the passenger side, just like every other Subaru. Carbon fiber trim. And then down here, we've got the ability to turn off traction control, the ability to turn off the start stop, and then you have the scroll wheel that controls the brightness of your gauges. So if you find it's too dark at night or too bright, you can turn it up or turn it down. Trip reset button. I get asked about where that is all the time. From the driver's seat, it's kind of right behind the turn signal, so it is something that's a little on the harder side to see if you don't know immediately where it is. Steering wheel itself, tilt, and telescopic, depending what you're looking for. You can adjust it for drivers of varying arm lengths and heights. Steering wheel initially looks very, very busy. It's not that bad. Left-hand side, we've got the ability to switch from AM to FM to Bluetooth to USB to AUX. Switch between presets, go to the next song, control your volume, accept or make phone calls out, hang up or decline. The info button will change a little piece of information up top there. And then these arrows here will change our small center display. Gives you a bunch of different information. I like the digital speedometer myself. Right hand side, we have our adaptive cruise control and our lane centering assist. Both of those use the two color stereo eyesight cameras, Subaru safety system that you get in the majority of our models. Anything with an automatic transmission now comes with eyesight. And you save 10% on your basic insurance because of the automatic emergency braking that you get with it here in BC. But when I turn on the adaptive cruise, image of the cross track pops up there and you can see there's four bars ahead of it all the way down to one. Four bars is the maximum follow distance. One is the closest follow distance. You decrease the follow distance by pressing down every time you do that. The, arrow, the bars go down every time I press the up arrow to increase it, does that. I pull down to set cruise and those lines right there will change and tell you what speed you're set to. So four bars at 100 kilometers an hour is roughly 150 to 180 feet behind the vehicle ahead of you if you catch up. As they slow down, you'll slow down, get a little closer. It's a, it's a great feature. Now, if you don't like adaptive cruise, you turn on the cruise and then you press and hold and it turns into regular cruise control. So you have the option for both. Then same thing, press and hold that same down arrow and it goes back to adaptive. I've just turned that off. I've just turned on lane centering and you'll notice that there's two illuminated gray lines and the image of the steering wheel. If the cameras can see the road lines, which obviously today it can't, It'll illuminate white on whichever side it can see. And then if you start getting close to one of those road lines, it actually gives you gentle steering input to keep you in the middle of your lane. Great feature, amazing for the second half of a long day of driving. You're way less fatigued at the end of the day of driving. I never recommend you use that in town or in the winter because the cameras are not perfect. It can interpret slot, uh, spots of bare road when it's they're covered in snow as lines and want to correct you. So just turn it off for the winter. We have intelligent and sport drive modes. We've got intelligent, which is what it defaults to. And then we have sport. So sport's a little bit more aggressive. You can see that line's a little sharper. You'll accelerate fast. Your RPMs will be higher. You'll use a little bit more fuel, but it's a little bit more spirited driving, a little bit more fun. Top right here in the middle, we've got an information screen. And I press the info button on the left-hand side and it changes the information on the right-hand side. Average speed for your trip, nothing. Estimated distance to empty, fuel economy, which of course isn't isn't very good at 19.4 liters right per hundred right now. That's because we're sitting still, not really doing anything. Estimated distance to empty is the one that lots of people ask about. Got your thermometer up there, your clock. You also have your temperature, and it ranges from 32 on the high side all the way down to 18. So from freezing to tropical, depending how you want it. And it is easy. I'm just going to turn that back up. You can see on the bottom right there, there's an, an image of a person and some arrows. And that's just showing you where your airflow is being directed. And I'll show you where you make those changes. And then fan strength is the bar in the middle, whether you're turning it up or turning it down. Below that, we have our infotainment screen, 6.5 inches. It's touchscreen or you have the physical buttons here. You wanna to go to radio, press radio and it'll pop up. You've got the physical button to go home. You also have the home button right there. Put it in reverse and the backup camera pops up. Shows you the top of the bumper so you have something to relate to. And as I turn the wheel, those orange lines move and show you where you're gonna end up if you keep the wheel turned that way. Great for parking lots. 
climate controls are adjusted from here. You've got temperature, fan strength, and as you twist this dial, that changes where the airflow is being directed. This turns on your heated mirrors and heated back window. Stays on for 15 minutes and then shuts off. You can change it so it stays on continuously, but really that's probably unnecessary. Below that, you've got a USB aux and 12 volt. The USB is for using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. The aux is for music. 12 volts for charging. The USB is also for charging, but the primary use is obviously Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. This is rubberized, so the idea is you can put a device there and it'll hopefully not slide around as much. Automatic transmission. Now, this, you get drive and then you get low gearing. So you've got D and L and it says L right there, indicating you're in low. So some people have a habit of putting it in drive and pulling towards themselves, just a natural back and towards themselves. That is... Uh, going to have you sitting at a higher RPMs, not going as fast. So drive is for everything. Low is for off-road or going up or down super steep surfaces. And then we have X mode. Turn on X mode. X mode is like 4x4 low in a pickup. When you turn on X mode, you get the X mode screen. Locks the all-wheel drive 50-50. Changes your transmission gearing, your throttle response. You get the little rough terrain icon right there. And the downhill descent control. It's for really extreme stuff. 99% of people are never going to need to use it. Even on a day like today where there's a ton of snow, most people aren't going to need to use it. We've got cup holders, easily accessible. We've got the good old handbrake. Not a lot of cars offer this anymore. And then in the center here, you've got a 12 volt outlet. Kind of hard to see, but there is a place to run any cords out you're using for charging so you don't crush it with the armrest. On the right hand side here, more carbon fiber trim above the glove box. It's an average size glove box. You've got your owner's manuals. Up top here, you have airbag off or airbag on, and that is for the passenger seat. It's based on a weight sensor. You've got lane sway and automatic emergency braking. This is the one I mentioned earlier that saves you 10% on your basic insurance here in BC. This one starts beeping at you if you start crossing lines without signaling. On a day like today, lots of people turn it off, or even just in the winter, it's a press and hold audible beep and you get to look at it on the left hand side there pretty much anything on subaru's dash that is orange either means something's turned off or caution so i mentioned that and you see the little orange snowflake in the road there that's letting you know that it's at a temperature where it could be slick out can't necessarily see the temperature changing especially when it's around four degrees and there's no snow on the road so it's a nice indicator we have our map lights and then we have the ability to turn it so that, so it's set to door. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but there is door and off right there. So it's set to door, so when I open a door, lights come on, turn it off, and I open the door, they stay off. So you've got that option. On the visors, got sunglass, storage hooks, mirror, and then these do go across. You are missing the extender that you get on the higher end trims but this is a very entry level cross track. This is pretty much every, the model that we sell to fleet companies or someone who just doesn't want all of the bells and whistles. This is very, very basic, still very capable, same all wheel drive system as the rest of the Subarus. So I pop the hood to open it. You go to the right hand side of the logo when you're facing the car, lift up, hand in facing down and move from right to left. And you can see it's right here. So that's the two liter engine bay. Not a lot going on. Looks very, very similar to the 2.5. Pretty much everything in yellow, brake fluid, washer fluid, oil, coolant, dipstick. That's the stuff that the average consumer is gonna touch. We've got the oil filter up top. Got a cover on the positive battery terminal and you have easy access to your air filter. So yeah, not a lot going on in those engine base lots of room in them to work which is nice but yeah this is one of the, this is the most basic cross track you can get other than the automatic transmission because you can get these with a manual transmission in the 2023 model year which is unfortunately going to be the last model year offered with the manual so that is a quick overview of the 2023 subaru convenience cross track with eyesight if you have any questions about this or any of the vehicles on our lineup, any of the tech, please put it in the comments below. I'm always looking for new things to cover in my videos for you guys. Thanks for watching. Talk soon.